morning. Welcome to our service for the observation of Monday Thursday, the day that our Lord not only institutes the sacrament of Holy Communion, but also the day when he gives his church the example of humble service and directs us to follow that example in serving one another as he has served us. Our opening hymn this day is the hymn, When You Woke That Thursday Morning. When you woke that Thursday morning, Savior, teacher, faithful friend, thoughts of self and safety scorning, knowing how the day would end. Lamb of God for twelve for ages, now at last. our sin, God is faithful and just. He will forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins unto God our Father. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, 
and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this debt and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Salvation comes through the cross on which the Lord of glory died. A responsive reading for this day is taken from Psalm 116. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant. You have freed me from my chains. I will sacrifice a thank offering to you and call upon the name of the Lord. I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. O Lord. o Lord Jesus, since you have left us the testimony of your love through humble service, we pray that we too would love and serve our neighbor, that the fruit of your redeeming work may continually be shown in us through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for this day is taken from the book of Exodus, the 24th chapter. Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the rules. And all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain, and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the people of Israel, who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen to the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he threw against the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people. And they said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do, and we will be obedient. And Moses took the blood and threw it on the people, and said, Behold the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Then Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel went up, and they saw the God of Israel. There was under his feet, as it were, a pavement of sapphire stone, like the very heaven for clearness. And he did not lay his hand on the chief men of the people of Israel. They beheld God, and ate and drank. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel for this day is an alternate reading for Monday, Thursday. It's from the Gospel according to St. John, verse 13. For those of you following along in a bulletin, it is different than what's listed in the bulletin. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin 
and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, Those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean. And you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Having heard the word of God and his promise of forgiveness and absolution, we join in confession of the faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our hymn of the day is Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Love divine, all loves excelling, joy of heaven to earth come down. Fix in us thy humble dwelling, all thy faithful mercies crown. Jesus, thou
mercy and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text is from the Gospel lesson for this day, John chapter 13. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. So far the text. It's Monday, Thursday, a day when we remember so much about the founding of the sacrament of the altar, the sacrifice of our Lord, the betrayal that he experiences that night from Judas, and later on even from his close circle of disciples. We see the work of salvation now being put into motion. The one who has come to be among us in the Incarnation, the one who has shown he has authority over all things in this world, who is healing and cleansing, is giving sight to the blind, being able to even raise the dead, the one who has taken upon himself the burden of sin, is now on the path to the cross. Those who gather with him on that Passover night are not aware of what is about to take place. But our Lord is fully aware and walks willingly to his fate. And as he prepares to walk that final path to the cross, and as he prepares to bear the heavy burden of that sin, to take the punishment upon himself, to suffer the mocking and the ridicule and the isolation that sin and its retribution brings. He takes the opportunity to teach one last time what it means to be a servant. The disciples are gathered for the Feast of the Passover, a feast in which the people of Israel remember God's presence and God's intervention in their lives in rescuing them from the bondage of sin in Egypt. It is the holiest event of their calendar. Thousands and thousands of people have come to Jerusalem to celebrate the feast. And that night, in households around the city and throughout the country, people are gathering to read the story of the Exodus, to remind themselves of God's presence in the midst of adversity and the fulfillment of his promises. Jesus is there in the room with his disciples. And as they celebrate the presence and the work that God has done for his people Israel in the past, for most it's just another Passover. Now after three years of being with Jesus, you would think that nothing would surprise the disciples. But when the meal's over, Jesus stands up and prepares himself as a household servant, takes off his outer garments, wraps a towel around himself, fills a basin with water, and goes around and washes the disciples' feet. You can imagine the consternation that must have taken place. This is completely out of order, out of sequence. First of all, if you're going to have your feet washed, it's when you come into the residence. And it's not by your friend or your host. It's by the lowest servant in the household. You can imagine the questions and the confusion that were present in the disciples. But Jesus has done things throughout the three years of his ministry that have been out of the ordinary and surprising. The disciples probably have learned at this point just to let him do what he does because he will explain his action. But when Jesus gets to Peter, mm -hmm. Peter, with the personality that Peter has, just can't, just can't stay quiet. You can just imagine Peter as the Lord comes up to him with that basin of water and begins to kneel down saying, Are you going to wash my feet? Really? The confusion and, and, and just the, the ludicrousness 
of it just overwhelms Peter. And he breaks through that awkward silence. Jesus says, if I'm going to be part of you, you're going to be part with me. I have to. I have to wash your feet. Peter just says no. He has been through quite a bit with Jesus to this point. But he just can't accept this. No. You are the teacher. You are the healer. You are the Christ. He declared him to be so 18 months prior. You are the Christ, he said, the son of the living God. He understood Jesus' role. He understood who he was, the fulfillment of the prophecies. But what he did not yet understand was what it meant to be Christ, even though Jesus had pointed it out several times. Even though Jesus had told his disciples what awaited them when they went to Jerusalem, that first day, that they proclaimed him to be the Christ on the mountainside, Jesus immediately told them that as Christ, he would suffer, that he would be handed over to the chief priests and elders of the people, that he would be put to death, and then gave the promise that he would be raised to life. He proclaimed that to be Christ was to be a servant, the servant that Isaiah speaks of in chapter 53. But Peter has not yet understood that, even as Jesus is kneeling before him, washing his feet. Jesus says, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. And you can just see Peter just giving up, going, okay, all right. Then not just my feet, Lord, but everything. I, Peter is always all in with Jesus. He loves his Lord. And he so much wants to please him and do the right thing. That Peter's emotions often overwhelm him. All right, then it's not my feet, but everything, Lord. I'm totally in. Whatever you want, whatever you need, you can count on me. And I like to think that Jesus kind of had a little grin on his face when he said, those who are at bad bath don't need to wash all over just their feet. The whole body is clean. What Jesus is doing here, he's not literally washing and cleansing the disciples. He's showing the idea of servanthood, of service, of going beyond self and looking at what is needful and necessary among those with whom we share our lives. He gives them the explanation that they've been waiting for. He says, do you understand what I've done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, that is what I am. There's no doubt that he is still the one who has authority, the one who holds the position of Christ. He says, now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should wash one another's feet. Now that I have served you, you are to serve one another. You can't think yourself greater than me. If I have lowered myself down to the lowliest task of a household servant, then the same is true of you. If I have met the needs of my fellow man, then you are to do the same. Do you understand what I have done for you? Jesus says to the disciples that day as he teaches them about servanthood in this last lesson. We commemorate what the disciples did not yet know. We commemorate during this Holy Week not only the beginning of a great sacrament and feast of the Church and Holy Communion, but we commemorate the servanthood of Christ, which he accomplishes tomorrow through his suffering and death. And just as our Lord has served us in that sacrificial way on the cross, and just as he has completely emptied himself and lowered himself, to deal with the base elements of our human nature. The question goes to us as well. Now that our Lord has served us as he did the disciples that night, and as he has shown his servanthood, and as he has shown his humility, and as he has emptied himself completely on our behalf, the question is before us. Do you understand what I have done for you? When I was in college, 
I had a plaque that was on my wall, and it said, I asked Jesus, how much do you love me? And he spread his arms and died. The question that's before us is, do we understand the sacrifice of our Lord? Do we understand exactly what it is he accomplished on the cross that day? Do we understand the full power of the service and the humility and the sacrifice that he made for us as he carried out that work of salvation? Because when we have understanding of that sacrificial act, we know where our salvation lies. When we understand that the full guilt of sin has been placed upon Christ on that cross, we know that we never need to be in fear of God, his judgment, his wrath, his persecution. For we know that all of that, which is the result of sin in the world and in our own lives, we know that the punishment, the anger, has all been placed on Christ in that sacrificial servant act of his death on the cross. He spread his arms, and he died to take upon himself the punishment, the guilt, the wrath, the separation from God that sin brings. So when we are faced with the guilt of our actions, when we come to recognize our shortcomings in our life, when we realize that we have not loved God with our whole heart or served our neighbor and loved our neighbor as ourselves, we can come before God for the cleansing that's symbolized here in John 13. It's called confession and absolution. We stand before God not in mortal fear that he's going to strike us down because of our sin in his judgment and in his righteous anger, for we know that that has been accomplished on the cross. Instead, we simply confess our sins to our Father. And as St. John says in his first letter, he will forgive our sin and he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Do we understand what our Lord, as our servant, has done for us. The question that he asked the disciples is before us as well. When we come before the Lord, do we see him as the one who has fulfilled all the prophecies? Do we see him as the one who has endured the punishment of God? Do we understand that he alone has been separated from God because of our sin when he cries out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? carries out that servant role on our behalf so that that righteous, judgmental, vindictive anger of God is satisfied. And because he has served us in that way, and because he has shown us that kind of humility, he calls upon us as he did the disciples to show that same love and that same service and that same compassion and openness to others as we ourselves have received. Do we understand what it is that we will commemorate tomorrow? By the power of the Spirit through, speaking through the word of the gospel, we pray for understanding. And we pray for the opportunities to make that understanding known as we reach out, as we serve, as we show love to one another. During this past month, our whole world has turned upside down. What we felt was important and necessary and so needful at the time, we're beginning to have new priorities and new understandings. In a time of social isolation, maybe our relationships, maybe our connections are becoming more important to us. And as that happens in our life, the opportunity is there for the gospel to be at work in our hearts, to reflect the love and the mercy and the service that Christ has shown to us. It's a servant's path that we walk as followers of Christ. For he himself has emptied himself completely that we might be redeemed and we in turn 
empty ourselves that he might be glorified. As we begin the walk to the cross this day, and as we see our Lord in his suffering and torment tomorrow, and as we anticipate the open grave of Easter, let the question ever be before us. Do we understand what it is he has done for us? And when that understanding comes, then the question is, how will we show it? How will we reflect it? How will we make it known as his servants? By the grace of God and his son, Jesus Christ, we pray for the eyes to see the opportunities to do just that to show our understanding, to proclaim his mercy, to announce that with the end of judgment, all that remains is mercy and salvation before God. Amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you have brought life and salvation to us who live in this dark and chaotic place. We give you thanks that as your servant, he has fulfilled the plan of salvation, taking upon himself the punishment of sin and the separation that it brings that we indeed might be forgiven and restored to your presence. Father, we pray that as our Lord has emptied himself for us, that we would show the same love, the same service, the same care and concern for our neighbor as he has shown us. Strengthen us in the conviction of our faith that all that we do and say would be a thank offering and a testimony to what he has accomplished for us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Most merciful Father, you have committed to our love, our care of our fellow human beings and their necessities. Graciously be with and prosper all those who serve the sick and those who are in need. Let their service be abundantly blessed as they bring relief to those who suffer, as they comfort those who are sorrowing, as they bring peace to the dying. Grant them the knowledge that inasmuch as they do it unto the least of your brothers, they do it unto you. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, as we prepare the walk to the cross, and as tomorrow we gather to hear the testimony of our Lord's suffering, we pray that you would be with us, that you would enlighten us with the assurances of the truth of salvation that we would see in our Lord's passion of death and dying, our own salvation. Be with us during these sorrowful days, that our eyes would be fixed upon that which is sure and certain, the salvation that has come through our Lord's servanthood on our behalf. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our residents here at Lutheran Home and Harwood Place, that they would remain safe from infection and be calmed in their spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the staff of Lutheran Home and Harwood Place, as they provide care, create policy, and work extra shifts to keep our residents safe, that they would be given strength and wisdom to go about their tasks, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the families of our residents, that they would be calm in their spirit and find peace as their loved ones are distant from them during this time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are afflicted at this time with any bodily care, especially those who are battling the current crisis, that they would find comfort in their need and peace in the presence of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in this world who are overwhelmed with fear and sadness, or who have lost loved ones in the current crisis, that they would find peace and hope in the promises of Christ and the assurance of resurrection and new life that he brings. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our first responders and all in the medical care field, 
that they would find strength as they provide care to their communities. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our president, our governor, our military leadership, and our national health service, that they would be granted wisdom and discernment as they lead the fight in response, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Our final hymn this day is the hymn of preparation, Go to Dark Gethsemane. Go to dark Gethsemane, all who feel the tempter's power, your Redeemer's conflict see, watch with him one bitter hour, turn not from his griefs away, learn from Jesus. Salvation comes through the cross, on which the Lord of glory died. As it is traditional in the Christian church, we'll take this time then to show our preparation for the suffering of our Lord by the clearing and stripping of our altar area. <laughs> 